With the release of version 16.50, PLS CAD has added several new cable load adjustments you can apply through your structure loading criteria to simulate various construction, stringing, and service load type scenarios. In this video we will be covering these new adjustments to show how they work as well as some of the previously available options for scenarios like unbalanced loading or broken conductor events. To begin, let's go into the structure loading criteria settings by navigating to Criteria, Structure Loads Methods 3-4. In this table, you'll have to scroll to the far right to find access to the cable load adjustments. You'll see this column here that designates whether we want to adjust the loads for a particular load case or not. If you switch this column to a Yes, you'll see the rest of the columns to the right will be enabled where we can make adjustments to the loads. If you scroll all the way to the right, you'll see that PLS CAD allows for up to 20 different adjustment commands that you can apply on an individual load case. The first important thing to note about these adjustments is that they are applied in a chronological order from left to right. So command 1 gets applied first, then command 2, and so on. This order of operations becomes very important when you start to make multiple rotation adjustments to the loads. The first thing you need to do is specify which wire or wires you want to make a particular adjustment to. When you click this cell it becomes a drop down list and you make a selection for the desired set and phase. There are also options for selecting all ahead span wires or all backspan wires. And keep in mind that a wire's designation of being an ahead or backspan is determined based on its stringing direction. Wires that string outward from a structure are considered ahead spans and if they string into a structure they're considered backspans. You can enable arrow markers on your wires to show the stringing direction by navigating to Drafting, Show Stringing Direction. And when I do this, you can see that the wires in the screen point towards Structure 9. So these are backspan wires for Structure 9. Also, with the advent of graphical stringing, it is possible to string wires in any direction, which can make for situations where dead-end structures could have all headspan wires and no backspan wires, or vice versa. If you need to change the stringing direction of a wire, just press the S key on your keyboard and ensure that your mouse can snap to wires. Then left click on a wire and you'll see the option to reverse the stringing direction. Once you've selected the wire or wires you want to make an adjustment to, then you'll select the type of adjustment you'd like to make. The first adjustment available is to change the horizontal tension by a percentage. This adjustment is only compatible with ruling span analysis and is typically used as a means to approximate a broken conductor scenario at a suspension structure where removing a back or a headspan wire would cause a tension imbalance and that imbalance would be partially absorbed by the movement of the suspension insulator. After you select the adjustment, you then need to enter a value for the adjustment and a common value for this type of scenario may be say 70% of the horizontal tension remains as the insulator moves so you could enter a value of 70 to account for that. The better command to use, however, to simulate broken conductors is the next command called broken wire, and you can enter the number of subconductors you want to break. Some folks will get confused and think this command and the number you enter refers to wires or phases on the structure. Remember that this column selection determines the wires the adjustment acts on. So the value you enter is for subconductors and is only significant if you have more than one wire per phase. So let's say for example that I want to remove the ahead span of the lower right phase on structure 9. And let's also say that this circuit has four subconductors per phase. Well the lower right phase in, is insulator set number 6, phase number 3. So I select set 6, phase 3, ahead span for the wire, then I choose the broken wire adjustment, and let's say I enter a value of 3 and click OK. What happens is that PLS CAD will remove only three of the four subconductors on this lower right phase in the ahead span, leaving one of them intact. We can then display the load case to see the impacts graphically, but it requires us to enter a FE cable condition here. Then we can navigate to the sections display options and use the global display override to choose a load case display where we select the load case and center it on our structure 9. When we do this, we can see that the insulator moves some, but not a lot because now the one intact subconductor on the ahead span is picking up all of the tension of the four intact backspan wires. However, if we go back into the structure loads table and we increase this number of broken subconductors to four and click OK, then we see the insulator move a lot because there's no ahead span wire to restrain the insulator movement. And we can see the ripple effect of this imbalance on previous structures as well. 
So what you'll often see folks do in their criteria files for broken conductor load cases is to enter an arbitrarily high number for the number of broken subconductors, since most of the time people are wanting to see the impacts of all subconductors of a particular set or phase wire to be removed from a span. The next six load adjustments are ways to modify the vertical, transverse, and longitudinal components of loads based on the wire coordinate systems, either as an input value or a percentage. Each wire has its own coordinate system where the longitudinal axis is in the direction of the wire. Most engineers are primarily interested in these structure loads where PLS CAD reprojects all of the wire coordinate loads to be in the same coordinate system, the structure coordinate system. The structure coordinate system corresponds to the structure compass you see at the base of structures. The longitudinal axis is on the 90 to 270 axis of the compass, which typically goes up and down the line unless you've entered an orientation angle for your structure. And the transverse axis is the 0 to 180 axis, which is typically perpendicular to the alignment or along the bisector for a line angle structure. The other thing to keep in mind with these adjustments is that they are applied during sag tension analysis and will impact the sag tension output. In the case of a vertical load adjustment, it would be the equivalent to adding a counterweight to the insulator. If you choose to use the add load options, you also have to remember that in a ruling span analysis, the load is added to the structure attachment point. But in finite element, it's added out at the end of the insulator, which for strain dead end insulators may not give the desired effect. Most engineers will typically want to add vertical loads to simulate maintenance type scenarios where a line mechanic may be hanging off the end of an arm, and on a strain structure in finite element, that load won't be positioned at the correct location. The better solution for this type of scenario is to use PLS CAD's new post sag tension vertical load adder here. This adder is applied only after the loads are calculated, so the adder is placed at the structure attachment point and not the end of the insulator. The next two adjustments in the list are for unbalanced wind and ice loading. If you've selected a weather case that has wind or ice, you can adjust a percentage of it for the ahead or backspan wires. So if for example I choose the 2 inch extreme ice case in this project, I can apply a percentage of 0 for the ahead span wires and click OK. This will remove all the ice from the ahead spans while leaving the back spans at full ice loading to create a large tension imbalance. And since we're showing a load case display, we can see that impact graphically. We can also navigate to sections, SAPS label options to turn on some helpful labels to see things like tension imbalance or longitudinal insulator swing. And now we can see numerically the large tension imbalance that's being imparted. The next load adjustment is for taking a percentage of the wire dead weight. And this is not typically used since most folks are pretty confident about the weight of their wires. After that, we start getting into the new and more advanced options for moving and rotating loads around in various ways. The first option here, rotate the wire coordinate system clockwise after sag tension, has been in PLS CAD for quite a long time, and we are keeping it in there to maintain backwards compatibility for folks that use this type of adjustment in the past. However, we decided to add other very similar commands in version 15.60 called rotate structure loads about global vertical axis, or rotate about current wire vertical axis. These new rotation commands allow for aggregate command stacking. The previous command could only be applied once. With the new commands, you can apply as many rotations in the loads as you'd like, and in whatever order. In addition to the rotations about vertical axes, you can now also rotate about the wire transverse axis or utilize the snub load adjustment here to simulate the additional vertical loads you'll see from a stringing scenario. And lastly, you can take the loads for a particular wire and set them as source and then copy, move, or mirror them to another destination insulator. The copy command will leave the load at the source alone, but then add it on to whatever load is at the destination. The move command will remove the source load and add it on to whatever the load is at the destination. The mirror command is very similar to the copy, but it will flip the direction of the longitudinal component of the load relative to the wire's coordinate system before it moves it to the destination. Let's now take a look at a couple examples of how to use these new load adjustments to simulate some popular construction or service loads. 
Let's start by looking at the tangent structure number 9 in the demo.xyz project again. Let's say we want to simulate the replacement of the insulator on the middle phase, and it will require that we lower the middle phase wire down onto the lower phase arm. So to do this, we take our regular unadjusted load case and make a copy of it so we can compare the results later on. And then let's begin making some adjustments. First, let's choose the source wire to be set 6 phase 2, and we'll start with the back span. Note that these new source and destination load adjustments can only be applied to individual back or ahead span wires at a time. Then we pick the adjustment to be source and leave the value field blank for when using source. Then let's move the load to the phase below it, set 6, phase 3, backspan. And we choose the move command so that it removes the load at the phase 2 insulator position and then adds it onto whatever was at the phase 3 insulator position in the backspan. And we'll do the same thing for the headspan as well. And lastly, we can add a vertical load to phase 2 to simulate the weight of a line mechanic suspended from the arm. Now we can run a structure loads report, and if we compare the adjusted load case to the unadjusted, you can see that the loads that were originally at phase 2 were removed and added onto the loads at phase 3, and we added back in 1,000 pounds for the line mechanic attached to the phase 2 position. The second example we'll look at is a snub loading stringing scenario. The same process can work for dead ends, but we're going to show it on the backspan of the same structure number 9. Let's say this was a very long tension section and that we had to make a splice at some point. So when this line is strung in, there may be a tensioner truck or bulldozer at the ground that pulls the line up to tension. This type of scenario can cause very significant vertical loads on structure 9, and we'll want to check for that. Let's just look at creating a snub loading for just the lower right phase. I've drawn in a guy wire here to show the line that the conductor would take during the stringing event. A typical 3 to 1 slope, or 18.43 degrees downward. I've also adjusted the azimuth to be 10 degrees off of the alignment to show what would happen if the stringing equipment could not be set up directly in line with the alignment. So to make this adjustment scenario, we will again first pick the source wire we want to copy, which in this case is set 6, phase 3, a headspan. Then we want to choose the destination, which is set 6, phase 3, backspan, and select the snub load adjustment. The snub load adjustment automates a couple steps to make it things easy. It will first replace whatever the existing loads were at the destination. So in this case, the backspan loads are removed. Then PLS CAD takes the source load, in this case set 6, phase 3, ahead, and it mirrors the longitudinal component around so it points towards the back span. Then all you need to do is enter the desired downward angle, in this case 18.43 degrees. And what PLS CAD does is it looks at the resultant of the longitudinal and vertical components, essentially the maximum wire tension, and it rotates that vector downward until it is at 18.43 degrees from horizontal and then it recomputes what the vertical and longitudinal components are, which will show a significantly higher vertical load and higher longitudinal load towards the ahead span. And the last step is to make one more adjustment to rotate the back span snub loads about the global vertical axis so that it aligns with where our stringing equipment is. And we'll want to enter a negative 10 degrees to rotate the load counterclockwise in our scenario here. And now, when we compare our adjusted load case to the unadjusted case, we can see that we have almost doubled the amount of vertical load on the back span, and we have a lot of transverse load on the back span due to the line angle imposed by the stringing equipment location. And there's also a little longitudinal load pointing towards the head span because of the imbalance of horizontal tension. We hope that you find these new cable load adjustment features helpful in creating load cases that simulate your various construction and maintenance scenarios. And if you have any questions, please contact our helpful technical support staff. Thank you. If you'd like more information about our software, please see our website at www.powerlinesystems.com or contact us at info at To receive a quote for purchase or renewal of your license, please contact sales at powline.com, and for any technical inquiries, please contact support at powline.com. Thank you for watching and your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead line design.